really good, Taylor. Um, yeah, that's funny. I was sitting there and she kind of convinced me. <laughs> something, and we're doing the same thing. That's cool. Um, yeah, I was kind of sitting there wishing somebody else was going up here instead of me. But it's cool because I'm here and I accept it. And I'm glad to be here. And I thank y'all for giving me this opportunity as well as y'all because y'all, man, they're great. Um, but not only that, I want to thank God for putting me in this position um, to giving me the ability to honor Him and to speak His word and to speak it to y'all and kind of lead y'all in, in y'all seasons. Um, that's a really big opportunity. And my, my words are going to hold a lot of weight, but I trust God. He'll have a filter from my mouth to your ears. Um, I don't know why I'm standing behind this because I feel really, really small. Can y'all even see me? Um, it's funny because, like, Taylor, you know, we we got asked to do this. We got the same topic, but we didn't share notes. We didn't really share what we were talking about until this morning. But I was kind of nervous. I was like, what if, what if they don't go together? But everybody knows that God is faithful and he's creative. And there's no way that it wouldn't um, go together because he's God. So... Um, Taylor talks about community and I love that she built herself in order to to do community in order to be with congregation and people and she kind of kept it personal with her best friend but I want to talk about in the church because yes it starts at home I mean it tells us in Timothy that you know if a man can't lead his home and if he can't correctly um, just pastor his home he can't do it in the church he can't take care of God's place and that's a big thing, so I love how she touched on that, um, about it being personal and about really building yourself to come into this place. Because obviously it's not just a building, it's not just four walls, it's, it's people, it's the congregation, it's loving one another. And a lot of people don't realize the importance of love. You know, we hear the scriptures of um, love your neighbor as yourself, and it's a commandment, but people don't realize that it's a commandment. We don't have a choice. It's something that God has sent out for us to do, and it's... It's on a list. I mean, it's not a to-do list, but it's on a list of things that we need to accomplish as Christians, as lover of Christ. Um, and so, like, with that, it's just, it's really cool because we we work on ourselves personally. We get close to God, and we stay, we stay right here in our bubble. We get so close to Him, we're like, man, we don't want to ever leave this place. Like, this is good. This is, this is heaven on earth. But what about outside of your room what out what about outside of your quiet place like does it feel that good does it feel like you're walking on streets of gold and you're taking every step does it feel like you're you're taking a step for the kingdom of god i mean yeah like we do little things here and there we give our tithes we give our offering we we sing on the praise and worship team we help in children's church but what about the person sitting next to you do you know what they're going through have you helped them anytime this week or anytime this month or this year like do you honestly know what they're battling? Because if you don't, that sucks. Because I mean, we're supposed to, we're supposed to be a family. We're supposed to fellowship. But how many of us actually fellowship? It's not, fellowship isn't small talk. It's not, that's scratching the surface. That's, that's creating, that's creating just people not being strangers. But a friendship is more than just acquaintances. It's, it's love, it's family, it's being here for each other. Um, so I love how she set that up and God speaking through her because a lot of the time, like, we don't go beyond our, our secret place. We don't go beyond who we are in Christ rather than who we are in Christ. Um, so with that being said, um, you know, she talked about communication. In order for yourself to build that relationship with other people or relationship with God, you have to have communication. And commun communication changes things, guys. It, it changes your decisions. It changes uh, your direction. But ultimately, it changes your destination. And not just as an individual, but as this body of church. Like, as these people, it changes our destination. I mean, you know, yeah, individually, all that matters is you and God at the end of the day. But God loves his people. And if you stand before him, how many of you can say, oh, I brought, I brought them to Christ. Oh, I helped them get through whatever they needed. 
when I show them the word. How many of you can actually sit there and say that this this church body worked together in order to accomplish a greater goal than all of us? I mean, let me let me scroll through my Bible because I don't even remember where I saw it, but I know I saw it, and I know Jesus is faithful, and He's gonna put me back to that place. Um, but I was reading, of course it is, um, in, in Ephesians, uh, it tells us that we're there's only one body, one spirit, and we can't overlook the fact that we've been called to one glorious hope in the future. One, not several, not different ones, but one. And ultimately, that's to bring heaven down on earth and to help God accomplish everything that he has in store for us. And so, like, it's not, it's not just about getting right with your best friend or getting right with the people in your home. As important as that is, home should be here as well. Home should be not just this building, but these people. Regardless of where you go, regardless of where you're traveling, that should be home. That should be your safe haven with the people that love God just as much as you do. I mean, how many of y'all feel like y'all are at home when y'all come? How many feel like y'all can take off your shoes during worship and not care who's standing next to you? I mean, I know a couple of y'all that do. I'm not saying you have to. I'm not saying that's a thing, but... How many of y'all feel that comfortable enough to sit here and say, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to church, and it's Tuesday? Yeah. Does that fit in y'all's schedule? Does, does, a, does a detour fit in y'all's schedule? Do y'all make room for the Holy Spirit in order for him to work together? I mean, don't get me wrong. Personal relationship with God is great, and it's, it's wonderful. It's literally heaven. Um, but we, we have to work together to get to that one goal, that hope for the future. Uh, and it also, like, if you go back further into that scripture, it tells us to lead a life worthy of our calling. Not to, not to live a life worthy of our calling. It says to lead a life worthy of our calling. And when you leave, you have, you have people following. And I'm not saying if you follow, you're not a leader, because that's not the case. But how many of us can feed off of each other? when we're going through summer, how many of us can feed off of the atmosphere because it takes more than one person from not, not necessarily make things happen, but make things happen faster. Uh, especially when, when one more gather, things begin to change. And uh, a lot of the times we don't, we don't bounce off of each other's faith. We don't connect with our brother and sister in the church. We just leave it to ourselves and say, Man, that's good. It's funny because you know, me telling y'all the way this all happened, the way that me and Taylor got up here and the youth got up here was because I, I thought something was personal, but it was really for the congregation. I thought something was just for me. It was between me and God, but that wasn't the case. It was, it was for the body of Christ. My personal revelation became y'all's. It, it wasn't just new waves in my life. It wasn't just... Um, new giftings in my life, it's in y'all. It's like, this church is going to go higher. This church is going to go in a different direction than we all thought because we can work together and because we can love each other as a brother and sister rather than just strangers sitting in the pews, rather than just people coming into church. Oh, I see on Sunday and Wednesday. No, like, I want to see y'all outside, and I'm very guilty of this because um, before, before TBI, I was so busy. I was always doing something. I was always trying to make church fit in my schedule rather than trying to make everything else fit in my schedule because not not the church, the building itself, but the people, the people I spent time with, several people have asked to, to come eat lunch with me, but I can't because I'm busy. And why? Like, like Taylor said, I should be making room to grow that relationship with somebody else. I should be making room to feed off of somebody because we need each other. It's not just um, having a relationship. It's about using each other like it sounds weird but i need what you have and you need what i have and i don't say that in a in a conceited way not at all i mean you can grow me just as much as i can grow you yeah. and it's funny because like the bible tells us things come from the mouth of babes like people have prayed for me and i felt better but when my niece comes and prays for me doesn't really know um how to correctly put a sentence together but when she prays for me i can feel her spirit because she, she has childlike faith and she's not scared. She's not scared. And how much fear do we have when we walk up to somebody and say, hey, can I pray for you because God can just, just because you're doing it 
you know, doesn't mean anything if your heart's not in it. Your body can be there right in front of them. But where are your intentions? Where is, where is that love, that, that opportunity to grow that relationship and to grow in Christ? It tells us, um, let me see, I think it's John. See, I wrote my notes down, but that's not what happened. That's okay, though. It's not what happened at all. It's okay. It's in John, I believe. It's 1 7. If anybody wants to turn there, I don't think I gave that one to you because this is not what I was expecting. Um, let's see. Yeah. Oh, that's not it. Oh, check that out. Wait. Just kidding. First John, 1 7. That's not what I was doing. <laughs> Okay, um, I have it right here. If she can do it. Oh, okay. It says, anyone who loves another brother or sister is living in the light. Um, it says a bunch of other stuff, but that's really what I want to grab. When you love your brother and sister, you literally live in the light. Living in the light is living under God's covenant. It's living under God's bubble. Because as soon as you step out of it, as soon as you do something out of his will, I'm not saying things crash, but things aren't as great. And there's not... There's not God with you. He's, he's just waiting for you to come back. Like, come here, come here. But, you know, we're steadily doing our own thing. But uh, the Bible literally tells us when you love one another, you're walking in his light. I'm not saying it's necessarily that's what our salvation stands on. But as Christians, that's our duty. That's our duty is to walk in the light, to show people who we are, to be that beacon of light. And we can do it by loving our brother and sister. It's not complicated. I mean, it's not easy, but it's not complicated. As long as we lay ourselves down, and the Bible tells us to lay, you know, it, what is what is it? The greater, greater love of those who lay down their life for a friend. I think that's what it says. Like that's a that's a big deal. It doesn't it doesn't say, yeah, that love is great. It says greater the love of someone who lays their life down for a friend. Guys, these people should be your friends. We should be hanging out on Saturdays. We should be hanging out on Mondays. And not, not just at a church function, but as a church function. Not, not these four walls. They shouldn't contain us. They shouldn't contain these relationships. I mean, how much greater will our community be if we took our community here and put it out there? Amen. And these young people are here, and they're trying. They're they're giving up themselves, they're giving up their nervousness, their fears, and they're showing you that they love God just as much as we do. Amen. And they go to uh, market days during Christmas and they put on uh, ministry ministry things. Like they, they do worship paintings, they do dances. And that's, that's literally them dying to themselves. That's literally them saying, hey, my relationship isn't just in my church, but it's in the place that I live, it's in my world, not just my bubble. And so I really encourage you to just focus on, you know, building that relationship. Don't just scratch the surface. Don't build your bridge off of small planks that will break. As soon as you cross, as soon as things get shaky, they're going to break. No, I need plywood. I need almost buildings as my bridge because I love y'all and I need what y'all have. Just as much as the next person next to you needs what you have. There's, there's been a time how she went through with Penny, her friendship uh, built her. I went through the same thing. The, the quickest way to get rid of me was disrespect and jealousy. That was the quickest way to get rid of me. If, if I seen it in you, I chunked the deuce and I walked away because I wasn't dealing with it. You weren't about to make me stumble, but that was selfish of me. That was so selfish of me because why couldn't I help them get through that? Why couldn't I show them that there's no jealousy and love, there's no jealousy and friendship? There's, there's respect and there's honor, but I was selfish and I said, no, I, I'm not, I'm not going to let that hinder my walk because me and my walk, we're good. Me and Jesus, we're good. I don't need you. And that was, that was really dumb of me because I didn't help, you know, I didn't help them, but because her walk with God was strong, she, she persistently pursued me as a friend. She came up to me and was like, Hey, let's be friends. Like, no, me, no. No, you're too much for me. I can't. No. <laughs> like, I'm so serious. Like, that relationship is such a godly relationship. 
that is such a, a, a covenant friendship with her that I have. It's so weird because I, she's built me so much, like, from these past couple of months, as much as she got under my skin, as much as I wanted to walk away, that didn't happen because I realized how selfish I was being and chose to put that aside to build myself because she had something that I needed and I know I did. She had something that I didn't know how to get to, but because I talked to her, because I spent time with her, because it was, it was more than just class, it was more than her sitting next to me, I was able to build myself in that and I was able to grow in an in a area of my life that I really, really needed to grow because that was the only area I lacked, that was the only area I could not fully give to God. And now we're the best of friends. And because, because I was able to, to lay my selfishness aside and build off of who she was in Christ, she was able to do the same. And because of that, she's going to missionary, like she's going on mission trips. She's going to Honduras in a couple of days. Not, I'm not saying that I did it, but what God had in me is what pulled that out of her to say, yes, I'll go. Yes, I'll spend a year and a half, you know, preaching the gospel, teaching kids, because I have the confidence in who I am, I can do that. And I'm not saying it wouldn't have happened without me, but God definitely used me in that. And I don't, I don't say this because this is what I know, I say this because this is what she's told me. When I was broken and I needed somebody, she, she carried me. She told me who I was in God, she reminded me, but she also added who she was and what I needed. And so I sit here and say like, don't let it be just here. And don't let it just be in your aisle. Like, the new people, how, how familiar do they feel when they walk in here? Do we greet them? Do we hug them like we've known them for years? Do we try to invite them to things? Or is it just another responsibility in their week to attend? Is it an obligation or is it a delight? And I, I don't want to sound, I don't want to make y'all feel condemned because it's not it's it's the importance of love in your life in your walk with God and with others because everybody knows that your relationship with God should reflect the relationship with other people Amen. and not just your best friend not just your parents not just your children but the people sitting in this church with you and I strongly strongly believe that everybody in here each and every one of you have have seen something in somebody else that y'all loved. And like, man, I want that. Just like Taylor said, like, I want that gifting. Like, switch our giftings out. I'm not saying you have one gifting, because that's not the case. But why don't you connect yourself with that person and let them feed into your life? Do community and see, hey, how do I get there? Because she's there. Get close to them, hang out with them, talk with them, and let them pour into your life. Give them that opportunity Make room for, for connecting as a congregation and doing community because it's not just, yeah, I can work with you. It's not, yeah, we can make this smooth. Like, we can make this work. It's cool. <clears throat> it's about picking them up when they're weak and vice versa because everybody knows on a team you're only as strong as your weakest link. Um, you're only as good as the last person behind you. But if we're all working together for that one common goal, that, that hope for the future, that one, that one body, not separate, but that one, you can, you can smoothly ride into that. And you can stay under the covenant and covering of God and make it, make it so much fun and make it a family thing rather than just um, an obligation. And so, yeah, that's good. I didn't even, I wanted to give you a lot of scripture, but that's, Apparently not the case. Um, but yeah, I just, there's an importance in loving each other. Yes. And I know y'all heard this message before, and I know that it's it's not something that we're unfamiliar with because everybody tells us to love, love your neighbor, love your neighbor. It doesn't matter, turn the turn other cheek, forgive them, love your neighbor. But do we actually love our neighbor? Do we actually, can we sit here and say that I'm not saying you can't live without them because you can live without anybody because God is your sustainer. But I'm saying, like, could you get through your day physically without somebody next to you? And think about it. The, the, people, in your, the people in your world outside of church, do they love God as much as the people here? 
Are they under the same mission? Do they, they know what you want for your future? Do they know where you're going? Do they know your relationship with God? And if they don't, then how would you expect to get anywhere? If somebody's here not knowing, but somebody here next to you in your pew is right there with you. Who are you connecting yourself with? Who are you building your bridges with? And how are you building your bridges with uh, people in the congregation? Are you allowing it to scratch surface and be planks and make it shaky? Or are you setting, your up, setting yourself up for success and allowing God to use those people that he was set in this church for you? People outside this world can impact you and influence you, but they can't do it without trust. And you can't trust them without spending time with them. So how many of y'all can sit here and say that I trust the people in my church? And I'm guilty of it too, because I honestly, I'm still dealing with it. I feel like I can't trust people. And it's not that I can't, I can't trust people. It's just, I, I'd rather do it myself when I know I'm okay. I, I'd rather be in my safe, safe box. And now I can do it myself, it's cool. You know, it's fine, it's fine. And I'm not talking about with big situations, I mean, eventually I'll get there, but I don't really have those things in my life right now. I don't really pay bills. <laughs> so, <laughs> kind of still young. But, um, <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> I was saying my mom's house, bro. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I could never do that. I'm just kidding. She says not right now, but as soon as I walk out the door, she'll start crying. It's okay. It's okay. But, um, anyway, um, but yeah, how many... How many of you can say you trust God and the people next to you? And it, it's not just about big things, but the little things like, you know, when we're kids or when we're younger, we're coloring a page and somebody else wants to come help you. How many of you are like, no, okay. chill, <laughs> mine. This is my masterpiece. You're gonna mess it up. Yeah. Even, I know you're good, but this is mine. Let's, let's, not, let's not try that. Don't, don't touch my paper. How many of us are like that? Or how many of us like, yeah, go ahead. I know you're good. Like, you got it. You got it, I believe in you, we can do this together. How many How many people can say it's that easy to just push your paper next to Or are you gonna be like pushing it but still holding on? <laughs> let's, not, let's not give that away yet. Like, it, this, is, this is our family. I grew up with you people, y'all have raised me. <laughs> they say it takes a village to build somebody, and y'all have. Several people in this congregation have raised me and built me up when I didn't have other things sustaining me when I needed them. And I wanted to say thank you. And that was only because y'all chose to do community rather than doing church. Amen. That was because y'all chose to believe in me, important to me, rather than let me sit in a pew not knowing what's going on in my life. Amen. And I thank y'all. And I genuinely love y'all. I may not know every person in here, but eventually I want to, maybe not right now because I'm leaving here for four months, but when I come back, when I come back, I eventually want to be able to go out with people on Saturdays. Like when I came back from uh, DC and TVI and all that good stuff, I made it a point to take out the youth because even though I've been with them for so long, I don't know what they're dealing with at home. And it was a shock when I took some of them out, what they were dealing with, and it broke my heart that I didn't know. It broke my heart that I couldn't help them when they were going through that. It broke my heart, not that I didn't have a part in it, but knowing that my voice holds weight, and I could have helped. I could have, I could have picked them up when they're down, and these are people I've, I grew up with. So now I'm making it a point to be closer than just somebody sitting next to me in a red chair. I made it a point to love them like brothers and sisters. I made it a point to know, you know, they're, they're going through math class and they're struggling. I want to know, even though I can't really help on that, because I'm not very good at math. I want to be able to know and pray for them and intercede for them and stand in that gap for them. Because where two or more gathered, things happen. Communication changes things. So I really encourage y'all to just do community, not just in these four walls. Don't, look, don't let these four walls trap in or put a limit to y'all's relationship and how much y'all love each other. So yeah, thanks guys for giving me this opportunity. To share.